We'll be in a few seconds. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the March 9th, 2021 Special Town Board meeting. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada. <clears throat> Absent. Councilwoman Jaquith. Here. Councilwoman McGraw. Here. Councilman McPartland. Here. Supervisor Syed. Here. If you would join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, States of America. to the republic for which, for which it stands, one nation, under okay. God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we're going to move on to our public hearings. We have three public hearings tonight. So I'm going to open uh, the first public hearing. Will the clerk please call the first public hearing? A public hearing regarding an amendment to Chapter 69 of the Town Code of the Town of Niskuna entitled Brush, Grass, and Weeds. Thank you. Okay, so again, that uh, the first public hearing is now open. Um, I did receive one uh, letter via email that was requested to be read into the record, so I'm going to uh, read that right now. And it was submitted by Leslie Gold. And Leslie writes, I am opposed to the proposed amendment to chapter 69 of the town code of the town of Niskuna entitled brush, grass, and weeds. The change would make the fee changes even less transparent. As I've noted previously, proposed or anticipated fee changes that affect residential properties should be part of the annual budget that is presented to the residents before the annual budget hearing. That would be the transparent option. And that concludes that letter. Is there anyone joining us? Uh, through the live feed this evening, who would like to speak during the first public hearing? And again, if there's anyone joining us on the live feed who would like to speak during the first public hearing, you can click the raise hand icon or you uh, just can begin speaking. Okay, well, I'm gonna close the first public hearing we're going to move on to the second public hearing. Will the clerk please call the second public hearing? A public hearing regarding the Niskuna Police Reform Collaboration Plan. Thank you. The second public hearing is now open. I do have one letter which was requested to be read into the record. So I'm going to read that uh, letter at this point in time. This letter was submitted by Marina Franchild of uh, 2200 Dean Street. Marina writes, Dear Niskuna Collaborative, on February 22nd, 2021, I submitted my comments regarding CNA's draft report, the Racial Equity Audit Report Virtual Presentation of 2 11 20, uh, 21, that were forwarded to CNA and the Niskuna Collaborative for consideration. At this time, I, I am responding to the invitation from the Niskuna Collaborative for Niskuna residents to comment on several points, including what functions should police perform? employing smart and effective policing standards and strategies, fostering community-oriented leadership, culture, and accountability. Regarding police reform and policing standards and strategies, traffic stops, a disproportionality index for arrests during traffic stops shown by CNA during their 2-11-21 virtual presentation indicated that a correlation could be made between the data shown and heavy racial bias. The use of force slide, for example, said, using arrests as a baseline, the compound ratio for black community members is 1.4, meaning that black community members are involved in 1.4 times more use of force incidents than white community members. The CNA draft report states that NPD's traffic stop data collection process should be refined to help the department further understand its activity for all outcomes. The process of identifying and understanding disparities experienced by black indigenous people of color when interacting with the police presents social and scientific challenges. While data collection can offer the Niskuna Police Department the opportunity to assess the work behavior of its officers, which is a plus, data collection has potential negative side effects, such as data collection may become burdensome upon officers, startup and maintenance costs for data collection may be prohibitive, if racial profiling is indicated from any preliminary data assessment, additional training or changes in training may be warranted. 
Two papers that explore the pros and cons of various ways of data collection are, one, best practices in vehicle stop data collection and analysis, and two, the CNA Corporation, specifically how to correctly collect and analyze racial profiling data. Both of these reports discuss the critically, the, the crit, uh, the criticality of evaluating the extent and nature of police profiling patterns as based on appropriate methodological approaches, including those used to obtain data and comparing that data to appropriate benchmarks and guidelines. Why to collect, when to collect, how is the data collected, and what information should be collected are critical parameters that need to be crystallized. This is a daunting task for any municipality. To address this concern, both reports strongly recommend that a municipality engage in partnership with an outside independent research entity to provide assistance in learning about the current best practices in vehicle stop data collection, and also to provide assistance with weighing the pros and cons of existing data collection methodologies. As stated in best practices, any guidelines or benchmarks against which data collection is measured must include relevant categories of motorists risks for vehicle stops, such as where they drive, when they drive, how often they drive, what they drive, how they drive, who they are. Marina's recommendations are as follows. Number one, the town of Nisuna enlists the expertise of an independent research entity to assist in the development of improved methodological approaches for traffic data collection that can be deployed within Nisuna budgetary constraints that will result in significantly reducing any racial profiling. Number two, because the who in the last bullet above is key to racial profiling, I recommend that NPD officers get additional anti-bias training that includes an analysis of systemic racism so that officers can recognize how their own prejudice adds to inherited policies of structural racism that have found their way into every police system. My recommendation stresses that anti-bias training be considered a necessary part of retraining but not considered as sufficient unto itself. In addition, a deep exposure to slash understanding of the underpinnings of systemic racism must be part of corrective measures. The evolution of police policy from that of slave patrols to present day protocols needs to be examined and comprehensively understood by the Nisuna Police Department. Marina's comments on fostering community oriented leadership, culture and accountability the background on this is that domestic violence survivor advocates and researcher, researchers are increasingly searching for alternative ways to address domestic violence. Questions are being asked such as, is it safe to involve the police in the criminal justice system? And if not, why is the main or only resource available when seeking help? Survivors are often fearful of calling law enforcement as they don't wanna become part of the criminal justice system, they simply want the violence to stop. This mistrust of law enforcement to settle domestic disputes is pervasive within BIPOC residents of any municipality and also within the LGBTQ community of which I am a member. Historically, LGBTQ people have been criminalized and subject to wrongful arrests. Moreover, due to lack of police awareness and sensitivity, a masculine appearing woman, for example, can be prejudiciously prejudicially viewed as the aggressor or perpetrator and assigned blame. Since many public assumptions and assessments, including those held by the police, are based on traditional gender roles, the LGBTQ community has a reasonable anxiety about involving the police to settle disputes. When sexual assault is part of the issue, survivor fear of disclosure to the police often escalates exponentially. Marina's recommendations are, I suggest that as an alternative, an alternative to involving the MPD in intervening in or attempting to settle domestic violence incidents, the town of Niskuna and the MPD follow the lead taken by crisis assistance helping out on the streets, also known as cahoots in Eugene, Oregon. As described in High Country News Magazine, published 61120, such programs take police out of the equation when someone is going through a mental health crisis, struggling with substance abuse, or experiencing homelessness. When police show up, situations can escalate and the use of force can be disproportionate, especially towards Black people. A 2016 study estimated that 20% to 50% of fatal encounters with law enforcement involved someone with a mental illness. 
Advocates say the CAHOOTS model shows these encounters aren't inevitable. Less than 1% of the calls that CAHOOTS responds to need police assistance. The CAHOOTS system relies on trauma-informed de-escalation and harm reduction, which reduces calls to police, averts harmful arrest, release, repeat cycles, and prevents violent police encounters. This alternative would be very useful when domestic violence occurs, especially when the parties involved are BIPOC or LGBTQ residents. I have a trusting relationship with the MPD, yet I would not be comfortable enlisting their support for either a sexual assault or if I was involved in a domestic altercation. My recommendation is that the NPD and all police departments not be called upon to be experts in everything that is part of the human condition. One way to instill public trust is to know areas of expertise and areas of lack of expertise. Additional training for NPD will not create an environment conducive to harm reduction for survivors. Instead, what is needed is the allocation of resources to create safe de-escalation without police involvement. Lastly, relying on the police to settle these types of trauma situations is a misuse of public funds. Funds that could be better spent by deferring to community solutions such as those found in the CAHOOTS model. And that concludes that uh, submitted letter. I'm now gonna open the floor to anyone who is joining us on the live feed. If you would like to contribute to the second public hearing, you can do so now. And lastly, if anyone would like to speak during the second public hearing, you can use the raise hand icon or you can begin to speak. Okay, I'm gonna close the second public hearing. Madam Supervisor, I would just like to point out, I know she is on the line. Um, what Marina just submitted is beyond a normal comment from a resident. Uh, that was so thoughtful, so well written, um, researched. And I spent a lot of my time, as much of you, many of you know, um, working with behavioral health and substance abuse disorder issues. And the, everything that she just laid out for us was very, very thoughtful and very much appreciated. And it's really an issue that communities throughout the country are struggling with right now. Um, we're seeing with what happened in Rochester with Daniel Prude and trying to, on the state level, get a law passed to address that issue. And Marina lays out all of the issues around that and all the pros and cons of it. So I really, this was above and beyond and it needs to be thanked. So thank you very much, Marina. Thank you, Madam Supervisor. Absolutely, thank you. Thank you for noting that. Okay, we're gonna move on to the third public hearing. Will the clerk please call the third public hearing? A public hearing regarding the Niskeun Emergency Management Plan. Thank you, the third public hearing is now open. I did not receive any submitted uh, letters to be read. Oh, during excuse the me, can anybody, can anybody hear me? Yes, we can, Marina. Oh, thank you. I did submit a letter. Um, I got it in at 4.59. The deadline was 5 o'clock. Um, do you want me to read it? Yes. Was this in regards to uh, the emergency management plan? This was in regards to the, um, uh, the invitation to solicit comments about four bullet points about the NPD. The supervisor just read your letter. That that oh, was that was, I was just talking about. No, no, there was another one. Was that was that the one I got in at the end because I I had the wrong address. Did was that the one that was written today, Yasmin? Yeah, I believe so. Yes, I had today's date on the on the very oh, top. Okay. Oh, thank Thanks. you very much. Thank sure, you. sure, absolutely. I just want to make sure it was the correct one. It started Me with too, since I just sang your praises, Marina. No, I heard that. Thank you so very much. <laughs> I had a hard time getting in. But I also had additional points um, in what I sent out on February 22nd. Was that shared? I believe so. Okay. Thank if you. it was incorporated into this letter, then I believe so. Only one, uh, one fourth of, of what I wrote on the 22nd was incorporated into this, this letter. The supervisor is going to share all of those comments with us. I know the 22nd letter. I'll make sure that Thank there you. are six others who submitted written comments to us and she and I con connected earlier and we're going to share that with the entire town board. Wonderful. So we'll include Wonderful. yours. Marina. Wonderful. Thank you all so much. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Thank you very much. I'm glad that you were uh, able to connect finally. I really, I really wanted to. Thank you so Good. much. Good. We're happy to have you here. Can I, can I add one thing? Uh, Marina sure. also had submitted her comments for the CNA report that was shared with the CNA. Thank you very much, Marina, and also with the collaborators. So, well, I just want to say one thing for whoever can hear this. Tomorrow, I'm going to be sending a letter to the collaborative because when I read the Niski Una draft, I actually started weeping and I've shared it with a whole bunch of people. Niski Una should be so proud for, for having such a wonderful level of responsiveness and care. And, and I just, I've never been so proud of living in a place in my entire life for the work that the collaborative is doing. It's just absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's very touching, I, I have to say. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. I broke down crying the first time I read it. And then when I shared it with people, I mean, I've been calling people on the phone and saying, you're not going to believe this. And then I've read it to them and I start crying all over again. I'm part of Vocal New York and it was the kind of thing that you would think Vocal New York would write, not what you would expect from a municipality. And I, again, I, I, I can't tell you how proud I am of everyone who worked on this. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so we are in the third public hearing. And again, this is on the NISUNA Emergency Management Plan. If there's anyone who's on the line this evening who would wish to speak during the third public hearing, you can do so now. You can use the raise hand icon if you would like to speak or you're free to begin speaking. Okay, and last call on the third public hearing. If you would like to speak, you can do so now. Okay, I'm gonna close the third public hearing. We're gonna move on to our resolutions. We held the public hearing on all three of these resolutions at our last regular town board meeting, and we are taking action on them tonight. So will the clerk please begin with resolution 2021-58, sponsored by Councilwoman McGraw. A resolution authorizing bonding for the joint increase and improvements of facilities of consolidated sewer district number six. Thank you, do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquez? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2021-59, sponsored by Councilwoman McGraw. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing bonding for the joint increase in improvements of facilities of consolidated water district number one. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilman Jacobs. Yes. Councilman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. Next resolution, 2021-60, sponsored by Councilwoman McGraw. Will the clerk please read? A resolution authorizing bonding for the joint increase and improvement of facility of consolidated water district number one Consolidated Sewer District Number One and Consolidated Sewer District Number Six. Thank you. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Councilman Delarada? Yes. Councilwoman Jaquez? Yes. Councilwoman McGraw? Aye. Councilman McPartland? Aye. Supervisor Syed? Yes. Five ayes. And this resolution passes. That concludes our resolution portion for the evening. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we are adjourned. Uh, we are adjourning our special town board meeting and we're going to move right into our agenda meeting.
Thank you all uh, who joined us for the special town board meeting. We really appreciate you being here. Thank you, Marina, especially. Thank you. Okay. So I'm now going to call to order the March 9th, 2021 agenda meeting. Uh, we were to begin with a presentation. Um, that presentation has been sent in digital format uh, to all the board members um, for everyone's edification in the interest of time. Uh, we will be foregoing a, a uh, visual presentation at this time, uh, but we may uh, at a later date um, reprise the presentation. So we will move on to finance and general government committee items. And I will uh, yield the floor to our uh, town comptroller, Ismet Alam. Thank you, Supervisor. There are six items. The number one is a resolution making certain budgetary modifications. Number two, a resolution approving an amendment to Chapter 69 of the Town Code of the Town of Niskuna entitled Brush, Grass, and Weeds. Number three, a resolution approving accepting electronic grievances in the Town Assessor's Office. Four, a resolution approving the Town of Niskuna Police Reform Collaborative Plan for submission to the state. Number five, a resolution approving the Town of Niskuna Emergency Management Plan for submission to the state. And number six, last one, a resolution approving the Town of Niskuna Pandemic Action Plan be added to the employee handbook. Thank you. And I have a late addition. Sure. I need a resolution to hire a real estate appraiser for the SI, SI group property. Okay. Thank you. Are there any questions before we move on? Okay. We're going to move on to Highway Parks and Recreation Committee items. I'm going to yield the floor uh, first to, I believe. Yep. Well, we will start with our uh, Highway Superintendent, Ray Smith. Uh, number seven is a resolution awarding contract with respect to paving of the town roads. Okay, thank you. Would anyone like to touch on the licensing agreements? I don't know if Lori's on the line. Uh, I can I can address those. Both the Firestorm and the Lacrosse Club are still ongoing. We've been talking about them in committee. Great, thank you. And we have a resolution authorizing grant application to NCF. Sorry, I'm here. <laughs> Thanks, Lori. Hi, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, yes, this is something that we do every year. We apply for grants for the Niski and Community Foundation. We've been very successful in the past and hoping that this year is no different. So I was just looking for permission to submit an application. It's due uh, the end of April. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions on these items before we move on? We're going to move on to Economic Development, Historic Preservation, and Environmental Conservation Committee items. I'm going to yield the floor to our town planner, Laura Robertson. Hey, yeah, 15 Jane. minutes in, I, I was holding before that. Wait, sorry, guys, can you hold on? Somebody was finishing their report, and then mm -hmm. their name kept on as I was hearing the... I'm sorry, I can go back to that. I, I'm sorry, I just noticed that the link that was posted for the public hearing on the police reform is different than the one that we are on. And there's like seven people on a different link right now that we're waiting to talk. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I'm sorry. I, would I was just figuring it out and I popped onto their meeting and they're really confused at what's going on, but I can't have both tabs Laura, up. Why don't you ask right. them to wait for another couple of minutes? Supervisor, why don't we just get through these last few items and then we'll go back into that link and that will give Seth some time to get us the link that we need to go to. How's okay, that? I have to pop off or they can't hear me. They'll only hear you and then I'll pop right back on and do my items. Sure. Okay. Okay, so do public work so we don't. Yeah. We'll skip ahead and then we'll come back to you, Laura, when I see you. Okay. Okay, we're gonna move on to public works committee items and I will yield the floor to our superintendent of water, sewer and engineering, Matt Yetto. Okay, uh, number 15 is a resolution to appoint a maintenance worker in the water and sewer crew. This is tentative right now. We're, we're still 
accepting uh, applications and, and scheduling interviews. So if we find a candidate prior to the meeting, we'll, we'll go forward. If not, it may be pushed to next month. Uh, 16 uh, is a resolution that would authorize the department to purchase uh, materials used for the repair and maintenance of our sewer pump stations um, from Seaward Equipment. Um, it's a specialized piece of equipment and Seaward is the only uh, authorized um, dealer for those parts. Uh, we don't know exactly the dollar amount because we don't know until we do maintenance on the pumps what the, the parts are gonna cost. But um, we typically do it every year not to exceed $19,900. 17 is a resolution um, calling for a public hearing regarding a sewer extension on Pierce Road. I know Paul has been working on that for quite a while with Josh Hawley from my office. Um, do you have anything to add to that, Paul? I do not. Okay. Um, we have a, we've, we've created an estimate, and uh, I think the next step is to have the public hearing. So I'll work with Josh and, and Paul, and we'll come up with the, the uh, information for the public hearing. Uh, 18 is a resolution that would uh, appoint a chief water treatment plant operator. We had our, our chief operator retire last month. Um, Josh Walter is a longtime employee with the town. He's currently a senior operator and we'd like to move him to the, to the, the chief position. Uh, 19 is a resolution that would appoint a, an operator to backfill Josh's position. Uh, Mike Borowski is currently a trainee. He's another um, longtime employee with the town. He's a trainee at the water plant and we'd like to move him to an operator position. He, he has a, uh, just received his license. Uh, 20 is a resolution that would call for a public hearing regarding code changes uh, of the town code uh, having to do with the transfer station, primarily the uh, ability for us to have a, a one-day pass. Currently, uh, the town code does not allow us to have one-day pass down there. Uh, there might be some other minor tweaks to the code that would just clean up some of the, um, the old information that's in the code. 20 um, is just the standard uh, resolution for uh, accepting the warrant for the, the spring utility bills. This would cover the, the water and sewer consumption from the last half of, of last year uh, and so that we could get our bills out in April. That's all I have. Great, thank you. Are there thank any you. questions on those items before we move on? I don't see Laura yet, so we will move on to police and public safety committee items, and I will yield the floor to our uh, chief, Fran Wall. Uh, actually, Supervisor, I'm still at the station, so the chief asked if I could do it because I had the numbers in front of us. Sure. Um, number 22 is actually just, we got our mini bid results back for the two patrol cars for the year, so just a resolution to go ahead and authorize us to order those cars and purchase those. Uh, 23 is the yearly resolution we need to accept the uh, grant money from Stop the Drive program. This year, the number is $12,750. That'll all go towards either training and or enforcement of DWI laws. Uh, that's a yearly grant. We just need the authorization to be able to sign the agreement. Thank you. Are there any questions on those items? We are still waiting for a uh, Laura. To John, I was at the meeting. You were at the meeting. One of us can do this. The supervisor could do it. It's it's the vacant home registry, which we've already um, discussed a few times, and that's mo moving forward. Okay, now people are joining this meeting. So um, I don't know. Supervisor, do you want to talk to them or the committee chair? Sure. So as you uh, said, just to uh, continue on that vacant home registration, it's an initiative you've been working on for a long time, um, whereby fees will be set if there are vacant homes. So it's an initiative that will promote uh, homes to be maintained. Um, if they are uh, vacant, we'll establish a set of rules um, and fees for uh, homes being left to basically degenerate. Um, so the overall beautification of our town. Next, we have a resolution amending our planning department fees. This is part of the budget process. Um, it was an overall uh, part of a budget challenge initiative as well. Um, certain departments um, 
are raising fees as a result of budgetary constraints. This is one of those initiatives. And next we have a resolution regarding Complete Streets priority letters, um, another initiative that has been underway for uh, many years um, and it will promote uh, walkability within our town and it's essentially uh, submitting letters to various stakeholders to uh, try and promote all of these uh, very needed projects to um, increase walkability and bikeability in our town. And then we have uh, 14, resolution calling for a public hearing on adopting New York State stretch code. Uh, that would be better explained by Laura um, <laughs> and not by me. So uh, I'm, here. I'm still trying to get the other people on the meeting link that's different. Uh, some of them are joining now and some of them are having a little problems joining. <laughs> um, Laura, Laura, where was that other link? Well, okay, so I'm sorry, I was, the other link that everybody joined is the link that was in the, so if you go to like the town of Niskayuna and you go to the announcements and it says, police reform and reinvention collaborative needs your input. It, it ends in ASA and ours ends in AZV. It's definitely a different link. And I was like, oh, that's weird. So I clicked on it and there was like 11 people in another room waiting to talk. <laughs> Yes. All right. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't. I'm not sure why it didn't copy properly between the two. So, well, you um, didn't set up that call, so we don't know how that got set up. The separate room, Laura. While we're doing this, do you want to describe the stretch code? Yeah, Seth. If you don't, can well. So yes. Um. So the New York's, but some of them are still having problems. I've only seen two of them pop on, but um. So the stretch of code is um. Um, New York State has a, a New York State building codes and they have a, a currently adopted energy code. And um, I think it's 2018. And, you know, in 2021 or 2022, they'll adopt a new code and it'll be more energy stringent. And in between the currently adopted energy code and the future adopted energy code, um, there's a stretch code. And the stretch code is essentially stretching you from the current adopted code to what will be the future and it's more energy efficient. So um, they've just shown through um, carbon emission studies and all kinds of things that if you adopt the future code now, it has very long lasting impacts um, on reducing greenhouse gas emissions, em emissions and saving energy. Um, so um, so NYSERDA is supporting it. It'll essentially be the same code that um, people are used to doing, except a little bit more stringent. And there's a nice sort of got an initiative out right now for it, the municipalities get $5,000 if they adopt this type of code. So I would expect that this stretch code will probably be widely adopted in New York State very quickly. Um, so it's not going to be um, too difficult to meet. I think um, developers and builders will very quickly catch on to municipalities that are going to be using the stretch code. Uh, it's a very similar, I think, initiative to when we adopted the unified solar permit. And it will, um, and, and, and not only is it helpful to our climate smart communities, um, but it also makes all of the new construction in the town of Niskayuna and um, relevant additions more energy efficient. And I know at my committee meeting, they asked if there was an up, upfront cost to doing this. Um, like, and I just went through the documents again, a single family home, it costs between a thousand and $2,000 more per, you know, $300,000 home to add, to make sure that they're meeting the stretch code and you save something like $380 a year. So the payback time is like, it's like four and a half years um, before this stuff pays off. And um, so it's a really good program. And it should work very, very well. And my recommendation would be that we call for a public hearing on the code adoption at the end of the month, and then hopefully, you know, hear from people, and then, you know, try and adopt it at the end of the month after. Great. Thank you, Laura. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to adjourn the agenda meeting, and then I'm going to recall to order the special town board meeting, and then subsequently uh, reopen the public hearing. So. For all those on the line, have no fear. Just because we're uh, adjourning one meeting, um, we will reopen uh, the previous meeting. So at this point in time, I'm going to motion to adjourn our agenda meeting. Can I have a second on that motion? I will second that. Thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we have adjourned our agenda meeting.
I'm now going to recall to order our March 9, 2021 special town board meeting. I'll have the clerk recall the roll. I see that all town board members are present, but uh, for the interest of continuity, I'll, I will have uh, Michelle please recall the roll. Councilman Delarada. Present. Councilwoman Jaquez. Here. Councilwoman McGraw. Here. Councilman McPartland. Here. Supervisor Syed. Here. Okay, I'm gonna uh, reopen the second public hearing. I will have the clerk call the second public hearing. Public hearing regarding the Niskayuna Police Reform Collaborative Plan. Okay, so the second public hearing is now reopened. I see that there are a number of individuals who are on a different call, um, but have now uh, been able to join us here for this call, uh, who may or may not uh, wish to share uh, comments at this time during the second public hearing. So if you would like to do so. Madam Supervisor, could I just ask a question? Sure. Um, first, so when we did the audit, the CNA audit, we had CNA brief the town board and then do a presentation to the town. Um, we have not undergone that same process for the collaborative report. Um, is there a reason for that? Is something that is prescribed by the state? I, I was just surprised that we didn't follow that same process. So there's no specific guideline as to that in the state. There, within the executive order, it does say to uh, present the plan to the town board uh, subsequent to uh, the plan being developed and then uh, holding a public hearing. So that's essentially the point that we're at. Um, so the plan has been circulated to the town board members. Um, I did circulate a memo earlier this evening uh, or afternoon, I should say, describing what the process is. Um, a separate meeting can be held to have an official presentation of that plan. Uh, but again, we're working in um, any of the changes or comments into uh, the collaborative's report. And then that report will have an addendum that is an actual plan. And that plan is what will be submitted to the state. Um, and that will be voted on at the March 23rd town board meeting. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so again, our second public meeting, our second public meeting, our second public hearing, I should say, is uh, now uh, reopened. If anyone who has joined us on the line uh, wishes to speak, you can use the raise hand icon. I can call on you one by one and uh, you can share uh, any comments that you wish to share at this time. And again, the uh, second public hearing is now open if anyone would wish to speak. Okay, I do see one raised hand. Uh, Ellen Daviero, you may speak. Hi, so this is Ellen Daviero, 1322 Hawthorne Road. So listen, um, I think that there's a lot of people from the other meeting that we're trying to get into here and they, I don't think they're, I don't, I don't see their, I don't see them in here. And, um, um, and what you were, just uh, saying, I I'm just wondering if you can repeat that because I think um, I wasn't clear on that. So you have the collaborative and, um, and now you're adding your information to it or, and then it's gonna be presented again. Can you, and then I, I, I just, can you just clarify that for me? Yes, so currently this is the report that was authored and edited by the collaborative, the Police Reform and Reinvention Collaborative. That has been disseminated to all town board members, to all collaborative members, and has been posted online for public consumption and public comment. Tonight, uh, we are holding the public hearing to additionally hear more public comment uh, via this meeting. I have received uh, six emails uh, letters and comment to the report and included in the report uh, one of the sections is titled plan but it's to be decided so that was included in the report that was posted online uh, that we are uh, considering for the public hearing tonight so the executive summary and that plan is what the next step is and the plan addendum is what will be submitted to the state with the report 
and with the CNA recommendations attached. If that makes sense. Hopefully that makes uh, sense and that I was able to adequately explain that. Uh, thank you. So, um, so the the plan is being put together by the town or by the collaborative. The plan is being put together by the town. So I am drafting the plan, and the town board will be considering and uh, editing the plan. And the plan is not. Um, the plan doesn't alter recommendations. The plan doesn't alter the report. The report was born out of the collaborative. Okay. Supervisor, will the plan, maybe this will help, but the plan will be a product, will be informed by the recommendations as set forth in the collaborative report, correct? Correct. We're not going to be, um, you know, disregarding the recommendations of the collaborative and creating our own plan, correct? Correct. Yep, correct, 100%. The plan is just the implementation, how we propose yeah. to implement the recommendations as set forth in the collaborative report. Yes. Correct. Thank you. Is that helpful, Ellen? Yes, I was under the impression that it was supposed to be the collaborative put together the plan, then it went to the then it went to the town board, that not the report did, that the plan did. And then and from there the, the town board um, you know goes from there. But maybe I misread the the um, the what was given to us from the state. I, I'll re go. I'll go back and read it again. Okay. Are there any uh, other individuals who wish to speak? Okay. I see uh, Donald Wiesenhan. Um, hi. Yes. So. Um, so I was a member of the, of the of the task force that worked on this. So, but I, I gotta say I'm I'm confused about um, where the the town has come down on some of these recommendations. So, for example, um, is the town's um, when you on at the end of the month are you going to um, commit to having body cameras? for all the officers. Is that part of the recommendation that is gonna be submitted to the state? So yes, uh, in essence. So to elaborate further, um, just like the town board will not alter the CNA recommendations that are gonna be submitted as an addendum to the state, uh, we will similarly not alter any of the recommendations that were authored by the collaborative that will be submitted as an addendum to the plan submitted to the state. So, okay, so that's an interesting statement you just made. So you are going to accept all recommendations that CNA made and that the collaborative made to, to you're, you're gonna accept all those recommendations as they are stated for both CNA and collaborative. Well, as, again, as you, will implement the, you will implement them all. Well, again, this this is a draft. So the the draft report. This is a draft uh, report at this point in time. So we still have from now until March 16th when it will be circulated the final draft to the town board. Uh, so there is that period of time between now and that date where the collaborative can incorporate any of the comments uh, that were submitted by the public. So necessarily the recommendations may be added to based off of any of the public comment that we received. So I don't know that I can answer your question definitively because I don't know that the report as submitted prior, a week prior, 
will change between tonight when the meeting concludes and next week. Okay, but but your 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 expectation is is that you, you the town board will implement the recommendations between CNA and the uh, police collaborative um, uh, task force um, for for changes. All all of those changes. That is the expectation at this time. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So the public hearing, the second public hearing is still open. If anyone else would uh, wish to speak. So, Supervisor Zaye, can you still hear, hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, so if no one else has another, another question, I would also ask if um, one, of the, one of the big gaps that we found in our, our, our efforts was the fact that um, uh, there was little information or no information actually about um, how the Nisqually Police Department uh, tracked their um, stops, their police stops. Is that something that you're going to take into account or, or try to track separately from the state, which does not allow that at, um, in terms of, you know, uh, when police officers pull people over? Um, can we track that separately somehow? Is that something that you are willing to try to um, track? So that's a great question. Um, it's one that I don't know that I can answer at this point in time. Uh, I can yield the question to a member of the police department who's on the line. So that's something that I'm that I'm trying to work on. I'm going to try to meet with Kevin Spawn. Um, and see if there's not something that we can work out with the CAD system. Because um, I feel like there's something we can do with the with the CAD system that can track this. Um, but I do have to meet with him. And in my mind, there is a way to track it in CAD. Um, and if what I'm thinking in my head can do this, it would be beneficial to all Schenectady County police departments. Um, but I, I'm not like completely tech savvy. I just feel like the CAD system is where we can track this. But I do have to meet with uh, Kevin Spawn um, at the UCC and see if what I'm thinking at least in, in my head, um, can do this. So that's the best answer I can give you right now. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna be that meeting up for the next week and see if that is something that we can do. So Chief, I know that the collaborative spoke about having a better um, information on the stops as far as warnings that were given and instances that there weren't tickets given along with gender uh, and race of the people that were pulled over. Is that what we're talking about now or is it something different? So that is what we're talking about. And so so through tracks, we're not able to give out warnings um, because it violates people's Fourth Amendment right. So my thought is through the CAD system that there is something in CAD where we can put warning or uh, ticket issued. There might be a box in there where we can show the race. And that way we can track it through CAD. Okay. But I have to actually talk to Kevin Spawn um, at the UCC, who's, he's the director there, and see if we're actually able to track it that way. So, Mr. Wisenhut, I think to answer your question, we are going to do our best to implement all of the uh, policies that the collaborative brought forward. I guess the question is, is can we implement all of those uh, at a reasonable cost to the town? And I think that's what we'll be looking into between now and March 16th. 
so so thank you so john and, and I, I appreciate chief wall's response because um i've actually asked her this question a couple of times i don't think it's a cost i think it is a a matter of 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 a system that protects fourth amendment rights versus um how our police officers um interact with the population and it's not a huge cost it is a matter of making sure we have a system that is um uh fair to people um and um but also allows us to also track how our officers are interacting with our citizens so i don't think it's a cost i think it's a matter of making sure that we uh, uh respect people's constitutional rights but also at the same time um, make sure that we are not um, targeting minorities in our stops and then just letting them go. I agree. Well, so, so Don, my thought is if we can do this through CAD, um, we, we won't be violating people's rights because we don't have to put the people's names. We can just do like male, female location, um, you know, white, uh, black, Hispanic. It's my thought. I don't know if we can possibly do it, but that's my thought. Um, and and so if, if we can use the CAD that's already in place, there would be virtually no cost, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. But like, like I said, I have to, you know, I have to meet see with Kevin and see that. if, if that's a possibility. Okay. Thank you, Chief. And that's, that's kind of where I was going. That's excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, John. Okay. Are there any uh, additional uh, individuals who wish to speak during the second public hearing? If you'd like to speak, you can use the raised hand icon. I see a raised hand, Aya Osman. Yes, I just wanted to say, I think that um, as a member of the collaborative, we all worked really hard creating this draft. So I think we really do want to see our recommendations implemented in our community. And I want to know if you guys have considered or thought out what mechanisms you'll be employing to make sure that these recommendations are implemented, because it's one thing to, you know, draft this plan, submit it to Governor Cuomo, and then kind of close that chapter and never address it again. And there's a difference between doing that and really doing the work. And I would really like to see that second option come to fruition in our town. So I just want to know what strategies, what ways do you guys want to implement this? Because it's really important. I think community involvement will be really important. Um, and I think it's definitely a big undertaking. And it's one that we should be considering now. We really have no time to waste. Absolutely. And that's where the plan portion, that last section comes into play, is what do we do with all of these recommendations now? And how do we make sure that the town doesn't drop the ball on anything, that we keep moving forward? And essentially what that plan is, really is an implementation plan. How are we going to be implementing all of this into the town of Nisuna? How are we going to be auditing our progress and making sure that uh, we're meeting our expectations? Uh, setting goals and again, making sure that we're meeting those expectations, tracking all the recommendations and uh, making sure that we're implementing them. And I hope I'm not uh, speaking at a turn for any of my town board members. Uh, if, if you disagree or you have any other suggestions, of course, jump in. Uh, absolutely, Supervisor. And I, uh, we, we don't want this to be dropped. And so that's why we've got to come up with um, priorities, right? So there's a lot of recommendations, right? And if we had unlimited resources and unlimited funds, we could try to do all these things, you know, very, very quickly. We're going to try to do them as quickly as possible and put them, continue to put these items on our public safety meetings. We're going to get together as a town board priorities have to be set. And again, there's resources and those have to be taken in consideration. We also have a, another task force. Some of you are on that along with the collaborative. 
and, and asking for assistance with those to prioritize these recommendations and these changes that have come out of the collaborative and the report. So as you said, this is it's not over yet. This is still a work in progress. We're not going to just submit this to the state and be done with it. It's worse. It's still a process and we're going to be continuing on with this for at least a year probably. We don't know. It may take longer. I, I don't know. We don't know what the resources are. We don't know, you know, what the final recommendations will be and, and the changes that we have to make. So but we're going to keep at it. Our goal is to implement all of the recommendations in a timely manner. That's our goal. Right now, we just don't know how quickly we can achieve that. Absolutely. Right. And to build on uh, on what's been said, you know, we do. We have. I, I did participate in a number of the roundtables. The Albany Law had two around this topic, and a, a big topic of conversation in those roundtables were. How does this continue? We submit the plan to Aya's point. We submit the plan, it's not the end. How are we going to see that these things continue to be monitored? And uh, you know, we do. I've been through the recommendations. There are some that have some financial impact. For example, as I recall, there's a recommendation to hire someone to do data, you know, to, to concentrate on da data analysis. Maybe there's a way to get that done with existing, um, you know, with existing personnel shifting that you know there's some recommendations regarding uh you know uh collaborating with other partners to bring in mental health services the conversation about the the partnership the county has with northern rivers might facilitate that but that's going to take some time as well but to your point i and and, and uh some excuse me assemblyman i've already named, named you an assemblyman uh, bill uh town board <laughs> town uh, councilman uh, mcpartland mentioned we have another task force that some of you are involved in and we certainly hope to call on the task force for racial equity to to keep the conversation going to keep us on task to facilitate some of the recommendations well beyond the submission of the plan to um to to you know to the executive because it it has to continue and we're well positioned uh, better than some other, you know, a lot of other communities to continue that because of the task force, because of our collective commitment to effectuating change um, in a positive way to what Donald was saying, to make sure that everyone's treated uh, with respect uh, and equitably and that everyone feels welcome uh, in our town and continues to feel that way. So um, that I'll just I'll, I'll end with that. I, I'm also very appreciative of all the work. We all are very appreciative of all the work under tremendous time constraints that all the folks in our community, uh, you know, put into this uh, report. There's a lot of work, and uh, as usual, Niskina residents stepped up and um, did the work, and we really very much appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, I do see another raised hand. Uh, before I move on, Aya, were you, uh, did that conclude your questions or did you uh, wish to uh, pontificate further? That was all, I just left it. Um. Great, thank you. I see a next raised hand, Ellen. So I just wanted to piggyback off what Leah said and just to say that, um, I, that um, you know, as somebody who worked on the collaborative, um, is there going to be the opportunity for the collaborative to see it before the plan, before it goes to the public? Yes, absolutely. It, 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 is there a date that is that, or is that, is there a yeah. date set for that? March 16th. So that'll give uh, both the town board members, the collaborative, uh, a full week before it is voted on by resolution at the town board meeting. So that's um, the ultimate mechanism uh, is the town board's approval uh, of that plan. And uh, at that point, um, it becomes official and, and that's what is submitted to the state. So yes, we, uh, we hope to have the full seven days to provide adequate review uh, input um, and any necessary changes, I'm sure, I'm 100% positive there are gonna be changes and edits at that point, um, even at that point. Um, and if necessary, as I've always said, 
uh, if we get to uh, March 23rd and we're just not there yet um, and we need to have another public meeting, uh, we wanted to give ourselves that leeway before the April 1st deadline. So that's always an option too. Um, we, we are um, looking pretty good here time-wise, so that's a good thing. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ellen. Okay, I do see, is uh, Donald, do you have a raised hand? I do. So um, one of the things that I thought was very interesting in the mission statement from the police department was, and I, I know Chief Wall has heard me say this before because we've been in conversation before, is that their mission statement has to do with fighting crime. And um, very little of the police department's work is in fighting crime. Um, most of their work um, is in public safety. Um, and I would love to see the mission statement reimagined re around, around public safety and not about crime. Because um, if we look at the data, the police department actually deals very, very rarely with crime. I mean, some they do violations, they do parking, um, you know, they do less than one arrest every other day about a misdemeanor or a, a felony. And I think the police department in Iskina should really focus their, um, uh, their efforts around public safety and not about crime. And I'm really, really disturbed to see that that's in their mission statement because that should not be enough. That should not be where their focus is because that is not what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, thank you. And again, just so everyone uh, understands uh, public hearing typically, um, and, and this has been a, a good back and forth, and I think it was helpful, but uh, typically it's a, well, essentially a one-sided um, comments are offered and uh, it's not a back and forth for each point. So Donald, I, j I just want you to be sure that if you don't get an answer back, uh, that's the reason why. But I, we would, totally, of course, totally we would comments. Thank you. Okay. And the public hearing is still open. If anyone would wish to speak, you can use the raise hand icon. And again, the second public hearing is still open. If you would like to speak, you can use the raised hand icon. Okay. Without seeing any further raised hand icons, I'm going to close the second public hearing. And I uh, would like to say, um, and really Marina summed it up uh, perfectly where uh, she described earlier and uh, unfortunately for those of you who couldn't join us at that time that the uh, report actually moved her to tears and she had never been more proud of of our town so uh she summed it up well uh marina thank you uh for offering those words um and thank you to the collaborative for all of your hard work and for your collaboration i, I know it's um it was intended to be a collaborative amongst a lot of different stakeholders, a lot of different uh, people with a lot of different backgrounds and uh, opinions. And it truly was that. So uh, I am proud of you all. I thank you all for all the work that you put into this. Um, and uh, we will forge forward uh, at this point. And I have every confidence that uh, we will attain uh, all that we set out from this report with these recommendations and with our plan. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, town supervisor. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any further comments before I move to uh, close our special town board meeting? Okay. So I'm going to motion to adjourn. Do I have a second on that motion? Second. Thank you very much. All those in favor, signified by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hey, we have adjourned our special town board meeting. We don't have any further business to take up this evening. Thank you all so much for joining us. I apologize again for some of the technical issues, but I'm so glad that everyone uh, could finally join us. So thank you all. Have a good night.